Okay, so good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Waste Wednesday virtual open house. Um, we're very glad to see you all here. Um, there's been a lot of questions and, and comments coming in through social media and our website. So we're looking forward to answering um, and addressing some of your concerns. Uh, we do have a little PowerPoint presentation that I'm gonna share uh, to get started. So bear with me here. Can everyone see uh, this PowerPoint? Yes. Perfect, okay. So like I said, welcome to our, our Waste Wednesday virtual open house. Uh, this is the first time we're holding a, an event like this. So um, we thank you in advance for your patience while um, we kind of uh, go through this presentation. Um, just a couple of rules of engagement for this session. Um, we want it to be as interactive as possible. We do uh, have an overview of our garbage and recycling uh, collection contract and our services that we are providing. Uh, we're going to start our, our day with that. But just a, a few things um, on your Zoom um, screen, you will see uh, there's um, a chat box, which I actually don't think is appearing uh, for some reason, but there is uh, a little button here for reactions to re raise your hand. So we ask that if you do have questions, we are going to engage, engage the public um, near the end of the presentation. So uh, just put your, you know, hit that little button if you're, if you're looking to participate, and we will get to you um, closer to the end of the presentation, which shouldn't be long. We are going to ask everyone to, to please be respectful and mindful that this is an open house um, and it is being broadcast live. Um, so we're going to give our residents a uh, three minutes to express your concerns, ask questions, provide feedback and comments uh, near the end of this open house. Um, so like I said, just raise your hand if, if you wanna participate and uh, we will certainly get to, to speak to you. So for the agenda, we're gonna do some introductions. Uh, we're gonna go over the residential service overview uh, for garbage and recycling. Uh, we're also going to go through some frequently asked questions. There were many questions that were submitted in advance of this open house, um, whether it was through Facebook or uh, through our website. So we will be uh, tackling those frequently asked questions closer to the end of the presentation. And at that time, that's when we're going to open it up to the public for uh, comments and questions. So without further ado, um, I'd like to introduce our general manager of infrastructure, Sarah McDonald. Uh, Sarah's going to pop on the screen and um, and take it from here. Thank you, Crystal. I seem to not be able to start my video. Uh, it says the host has stopped it. Oh, okay. Let me just look at that. Ah, there we are. Excellent, thank you. Uh, thank you everyone and thank you for taking time out of your lunch to come and join us and listen to us chat with you about um, our recycling and garbage programs. As Crystal said, I am the general manager of infrastructure and waste management falls under my purview as does water, wastewater and, and roads. So it's quite a broad portfolio and I'm excited to be here for the first time really speaking to the residents of South Bulgari about our, our waste management options. And uh, I believe Mike Rend is also on the line. He is the manager of integrations and municipal, municipal contracts with E360 Solutions. They are our current um, garbage and recycling provider as of November 29th, I believe. So about, we're about three weeks in. I don't know, Mike, if you had any welcoming words or if I should continue on. No, just wanna say hello to everyone and carry on, thank you. <laughs> and of course, the lovely Crystal who is our our deputy clerk. Uh, we can move on to the next slide. Perfect. So this is to give an overview of our residential services. And again, E360 is our current service provider, and we had a, a photo op a few weeks ago with the trucks on that previous slide. So you can see, you'll see them out on the on the roads. They're bright yellow, hard to miss, um, and and there they are. <laughs> So in terms of residential collection, the collection dates have not changed. They are still the same as were mailed out in the, um, the calendar in August, Crystal. 
with the exception, I believe, of one road that was labeled on this map as as Thursday. One, one road changed, however, it is exactly per the calendar. No changes there. Next slide, yes. So with respect to, to the service being provided um, with the new provider, some of the routes have changed, maybe not changed, but people may be picking up your, your garbage and your recycling a bit earlier or later in the day than you were perhaps used to. So we do recommend that residents put their waste to the curb anytime after 7 p.m. the day before your collection and before 7 a.m. on the day of your collection. I, I do know that E360 is out at 7 a.m. sharp. So if you are at the beginning of a route and your, your recycling garbage is not put out before 7 a.m., it will likely be missed, unfortunately. So after 7 p.m. the day before and before 7 a.m. on the day of the collection. And this has not changed. This has been the guidelines in the past and it will remain the guidelines moving forward. With respect to containers and bags, again, um, similar, same actually requirements as before. 32 gallon um, bins are, are the kind of maximum size that are allowed. And there's a weight limit on the bagger container, which is 50 pounds. Uh, also, we prefer, not prefer, we would like all, all garbage to be in a black garbage bag and not in small kitchen catchers or grocery bags. That is to ensure that the, the operators are able to grab the bag and throw it into the bin without dealing with a plethora of small bags. And we'll get into a bit more on these container sizes later. And these container sizes apply to both recycling and garbage. Uh, accepted recyclables, this again hasn't changed. Our recycling is still being taken to the Cornwall facility and they are accepting these same materials as they had previously on this slide. There's a link to our website. Uh, there's a full list of materials that are being accepted and I encourage everyone to jump there and flip through it to make sure that we are recycling the, uh, the correct things. And I believe the next slide talks about plastic containers. Oh, it didn't, one through five. All good. <laughs> Sorry, I might've have, might have moved that slide here. Um, it's okay, oh, here it is. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, no, that just followed saying that um, the, it's like, if when you look at the bottom of your plastic containers, it will say one, two, three, four, or five. And this is kind of a, an expansion of what, what is accepted there. So I suppose right we'll go there. to the, all good. No, this is a learning experience. So uh, for the safety of the collection crew, we ask that residents respect that 50 pound weight limit per bag or container, that obstructions are removed from near your waste or your recycling, and that includes no bangs, which means that if, if the operator is not able to access your bag or bin, they will leave it behind, considering health and safety. No hazardous waste at the curbside continues. Uh, and all garbage set out for collection are in their proper bags or containers, as outlined on the website. For recycling, that container size, the township has these lovely recycling bins um, for sale. There's, there's $7 a bin, and we have on order slightly larger ones, the medium-sized ones that will be available when they are at some future date, they are ordered. The large rolling bins, which are over 32 gallons, I believe is a number, are, are not accepted because they contain, they're difficult, not they're difficult to lift, they're over the weight limit and reaching into them is a health and safety concern since the operators cannot see what they're reaching into. Um, on the screen, you'll see the stickers that will be left on, on garbage or recycling if it's not picked up so that you have an idea of why it may not have been picked up. There is a fourth, sticker it's orange and it talks about the bin size so we have an orange a red for weight limits a yellow for hazardous waste or large items and a blue one for x um, meaning that your garbage or recycling was not accessible to the operator so with recycling there is no limit to how much recycling you can put out. The Township of South Glengarry is encouraging resident, residents to divert as much as possible from the landfill. So if you put out one bin, two bins, three bins, four bins, five bins, as long as they are in the acceptable size of container, are accessible and contain recyclables, they will be picked up by E360. Um, one, uh, any bins that you put out 
sorry, any bins that meet the requirements will be picked out for recycling. With a note just that to add any, to that too, Megan, yes. or, uh, Sarah, sorry, um, that plastic uh, recycling can be put into blue clear plastic bags as well and don't need to be sorted. That is true. And we mm -hmm. are offering weekly recycling, which should be on the next slide. Yeah. I hope. Oh, well, sorry. I'll, <laughs> all good. I'll note here that we are offering yeah. as of November oh, 20. Oh, it's at the bottom of the slide. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> as of November 29th, we are offering weekly residential recycling. Hopefully, we can encourage people to put out more bins, and it will be perhaps less onerous to put out one or two small bins instead of four or five bins uh, every second week. So that that is an exciting change to our recycling program. I'm just going to fly through that one. We've already touched, yeah. it, touched on it. So as I said, we are encouraging diversion from our landfills. Our, our landfills do have a service life and we are, you know, approaching that and we would like to have our landfills available for our residents' garbage for as long as we possibly can. And we can extend that lifespan by diverting things to recycling, uh, to yard waste. So we do have curbside collection offered seasonally. I believe, Crystal, that is in May. Yeah, the week of, uh, yeah. A week in May for all residents. So four days of leaving yard waste uh, pickup. Excellent. And we are investigating um, offering or expanding that program. However, that would come at a cost which would need to be brought before council and approved. So right now we have one week of, of yard waste pickup and that is in May. We offer free electronics recycling. Uh, bring your electronics to our, our landfill sites and it is free through the Ontario Electronic Stewardship Program. And household hazardous waste. We have an annual collection day in, in September, uh, which, where, where is that hosted, Crystal? It's at Smithfield Park in Lancaster. Um, it's been there for many, many years and it's like a well-oiled machine. It goes very well, it's very uh, efficient. Um, and I think we had uh, 200 or three, close to 300 households uh, participate in this year's um, hazardous waste collection. Oh, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. So that's good uptake. So the rest of the year, we do have an agreement with the city of Ottawa, or sorry, the city of Cornwall. Um, residents of South Glengarry with proof of residency can bring hazardous waste to their um, waste management facility. However, I, I will note that that comes to the with a cost to the township. So we encourage residents to go with a, a full a full load of hazardous waste material if if they do go or save it up until our and just aid. Just for clarity. Our residents don't have to pay when they go, but the township does get invoiced for every town uh, for every South Glengarry resident who, resident who visits the Cornwall uh, waste disposal site. There is uh, the township does get charged for it. So hmm. mm -hmm. definitely, definitely make use of it, but just kind of mm -hmm. useful to note. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, uh, away from recycling and now to the, the garbage, which we are trying to, again, like I had said, we're trying to divert as much away from our landfills as possible. So we are implementing beginning this January, a, a bag limit. So presently, I believe Crystal, we have an unlimited number of bags curbside. It's eight bags right now. Ah. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have an eight bag limit curbside. And as of January 3rd of next year, we are moving towards a four bag or two container limit. So in a, 32 gallon garbage container, you can fit two bags. So it, that, that's how that math works. Mm -hmm. Our garbage tags. So if you are under that bag limit, if you have four bags or less or two containers or less, then you are, are clear in the clear. If, if you are above, you will need bag tags, which we'll talk about a bit later, but they can be purchased at the um, township office or I believe online coming forward. Yes. And throughout the year of 2020, we will be reducing the bag limit in an effort again to divert uh, things away from our landfill. So in mid-May, we're dropping down from four bags to three. And at the end of next November, so at the year um, anniversary of our current service contract, we are reducing our curbside collection pickup to two bags of garbage or one container with a few exemptions. Uh, we have heard from residents and, and from other municipalities that families with small children who are in diapers, it's very difficult to stay under this bag limit. So diapers are exempt. 
if they're put out in clear plastic bags, so not blue recycling bags, but clear plastic bags, they will not count towards the bag limit. And the Township of South Glengarry will be offering um, authorized exemptions for, for other reasons, whether that be medical, agricultural, or something else. Uh, there, I'm wondering, Crystal, if you're able to drop into the chat the link to the authorized ex exemptions form. So it's an online form and it will be um, reviewed by a small committee here at the township and, and additional bag tags will be provided to any authorized exemptions. And how bag tags work is you don't tag every bag over the limit. Is that right? Sorry, uh, sir, I was looking for the chat. Um, oh. Can you say that one more time? If you have an exemption, Yes. It's one bag tag per yeah. week. And it's, and it's going to be a different color um, as well. So uh, we'll be able to determine, you know, you won't have to put five tags out for five bags. You'll have to put one tag out um, for your um, exempted amount um, that goes through an approval process, but um, it's certainly not a tag per bag. It's one tag and it counts for everything. For those household. authorized exemptions. And then how do bag tags for non-authorized exemptions work? You have your garbage bag, you tie it at the top, you pull your tag off of, off of your sheet and you just put it around up here. I, I don't want to use one of our, our tags, but that's generally how it, how it would work. Yeah, they just need to be visible for the collector. Um, and another thing to uh, point to, if you have two bags in a container, um, you don't, obviously you don't need a tag of the, of the bag limit if you're under the bag limit, but anything over will require a tag. Yeah. That is a good clarification. Thank you, Crystal. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. I think we have one slide left. Yes. And I just want to mention about the authorization. Um, the, the form is still being, is under construction, so it's not available yet, but we are accepting those applications. Um, and so everything's kind of a, a working uh, a working document, but it will be it will be ready to go in the next week or so. So um, people can reach out to us if they're looking for that uh, more information on that authorized exemption. Oh, so here we go. Bag tags. Where are they? What are they? And how do they work? We've talked a bit about how they work, and uh, they will be they are available at the township office, and they will be available online on our website. Uh, we set the price as, as sheets of five for ten dollars and sheets of, of ten for twenty dollars. I believe that's still still our yeah five for ten and ten for twenty. Perfect. Yeah. And we... um, if, with that online option, I just want to mention that um, residents will have the choice to either pick up their bag tags at the office or we can mail it to them. So if they choose that mailing option. Um, there will be a, a dollar fifty additional charge just for the postage and and uh, and getting it out to our residents, um, but uh, we will make them available uh, either way. And as we get into the bags take system, there is a possibility for to to make them available at more places. But at this time, we're just going to make it available online and at our office and uh, and go from there. Perfect. And I, I will note that our small committee here at the township office will be reviewing any exemptions that come in in advance of the Chris, in, in advance of Christmas. So hopefully mm -hmm. we will have bag tags out to people for that January 3rd date. For sure. Excellent. Okay. So now we're going to move into some frequently asked questions before we go um, to our attendees uh, and participants online. And we're hoping that uh, some of these FAQs will answer uh, some of your questions, perhaps not. Um, so I think how we're going to do this is I'm going to I'm going to address the questions and, and Sarah and I together will will be able to answer them. So um, I would say our most frequently asked question um, and comment is regarding the container sizes. So uh, why can't residents use a garbage or recycling container that is over 32 gallons? And that one we've touched on a bit in the presentation, but I, historically the container size and, and weight limits, they, they have not changed. So that, that 32 gallon limit was in effect before. And our 
again, I'm just going to hold up the recycling bins that the township has been providing. They're, they're these guys. To put it and into context a bit, each truck has a single driver assigned to it, and each truck each day completes 750 stops, which is almost 3,000 stops a week. And so while it's not onerous to lift one container up once, doing 6,000 a week, it's just compound. So from a health and safety perspective, and it is a, the, with it, the weight limit comes through WMIS, I believe, um, we are, an E360 is enforcing that 50 pound per day weight and then Crystal jump in. Yeah, so um, E360, uh, and we have we have a member, um, like I, we introduced Mike earlier on, and if, uh, Mike, please feel free to step in anytime, but um, the collection drivers are trained and mandated not to lift over a certain weight amount. Of course, this is for uh, health and safety purposes to prevent injuries um, and long-term damage to joints and bones and um, and reaching into the containers too is also a hazard. If you if you think of these large containers and how tall they are, um, the collection drivers are going in blindly. Um, so there has been instances where you know drivers get hurt. Um, there's you know un, un, um, not so nice things in the trash. We can't control what people put in their garbage cans, but we can control how um, how to implement the health and safety of the collection drivers. Um, so. You know, E360 is certainly big, um, big on health and safety, and it's one of the, um, one of the, I guess, uh, benefits of um, such a large company is that um, they make sure their drivers and their collectors are working in a safe environment, and uh, we support that uh, as a municipality. We understand we want to keep our staff safe from any harm um, or potential injuries, and uh, E360 wants to do the same. So we understand that, we understand why people have these large containers because we, we live in a rural area, there's wildlife, um, long driveways. Um, so what we're asking from people is, by all means, you can use these containers, but we just ask that the bags are removed from the large containers in order to be picked up. And um, we understand that this might cause some frustration and um, some people might not understand our rationale and that's why we're, we're holding this event um, to give some more details on why we are enforcing um, this container size. So um, I don't know I, if there's I can anything just jump. To add. I, mm -hmm. I think so. So the most common follow-up question I've I've had to my answer here is why is it, this is a change from previously? Like mm -hmm. contractually, this is not a change from the previous contract, and we we have investigated options uh, to get the mechanical arm that was on a previous truck. It's cost prohibitive at this time. And we are just, in, I have rambled down a road. I don't want to keep going down. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Sarah, if you don't mind, I'll just jump in. Thank you. I mean, you are a hundred percent right. The, um, your contract rate restrictions have not and did not change from the past. I will not speak to what current contractors' methodology and ideologies were, but I just want everyone to hear directly from me. It is coming from me that we must honor these weight restrictions. I am not going to be the reason one of my employees get hurt. I'm going to enforce this. So if it wasn't enforced on the previous contracts for residents, I do apologize. That was the previous company's choice to disregard that clause in the contract. We will not disregard that. Um, we want to pick up everyone's material. That's why we ask for the smaller bins, because the larger bins give people the opportunity to put the larger bags in there. The larger bags are definitely going to be overweight. So that's why we ask for the smaller bins so the regular size garbage bags fit in them. And if we just follow that, we will collect everything. Yeah. Thanks so much, Mike. Okay, well, we're gonna move on to our next question. Uh, like we've said before, people are gonna have the opportunity to speak. So we're just gonna move on to the next. There are quite a few frequently asked questions. So we are gonna go through them here. Um, so how do I keep my, my uh, garbage safe from animals and birds? Um, use a black garbage bag that's well sealed. Um, you can purchase the acceptable size bins so that you have a bin to put your, your bags in. 
Um, and for recycling, um, instead of putting it loose in a, a container, uh, please put them in a bag and, uh, and just continue to use those acceptable container sizes. Anything you wanna to add to that, Sarah? Nope, that was perfect. Okay. Uh, what can we do with uh, old appliances that some people have asked what they can do with their, their heavy uh, appliances. We ask that people um, remove the Freon by a technician and then those uh, appliances can come to our landfills where we have a, a, a depot where residents can dispose of their large appliances, appliances. We will not pick them up curbside or I should say the contractor will not pick them up curbside. <laughs> Uh, we've received a lot of questions about um, costs. Sorry, um, Crystal, to oh. jump in there again. When it yep. comes to appliances, no, we can't collect it. But if you guys do have residents that don't have the capability of getting it there, we do work with um, white good disposal companies who will come obviously to cost the resident, but it saves them from having to get rid of it. But they do remove all the Freon and everything. They would do everything on their site and just take it away. So if you do have a resident that's not able to get it there themselves, we could put them in contact with a company who could come to their house. Excellent. That's great information, Mike. Thank you. Mike, just noting that in my file here. Okay. So um, I've given an overview of the cost, uh, or sorry, people have been asking uh, what the cost is of our garbage and recycling contract. Sarah, I don't know if you can touch on that part. I, I can. So first of all, this information is publicly available right now. So after this meeting, feel free to look it up. It's in the November 1st council meeting mm -hmm. uh, when, when the contract award was approved by our council. The annual cost is $1,051,000. And it is broken down between a weekly garbage at just under $500,000. Our single stream weekly recycling is also just under $500,000. The seasonal yard waste collection is about $43,000. And our large item pickup um, is $1,750. So again, publicly available, the November 1st council meeting, uh, you, you can read all the details right there. Perfect. So um, another uh, question is uh, regarding household hazardous waste um, and if we would consider holding a second event. So I just, I know we've um, spoke about that earlier, but I just want to re reiterate that, um, you know, we're always listen, you know, getting feedback from residents and listening and, um, and analyzing if we need more days. Now uh, we have our annual has household hazardous waste day in September. And like we said earlier, Cornwall has a, uh, a depot where our residents can bring their hazardous waste. And I just wanna note something important that it is only open uh, from April to November. So it is not, you can't bring your hazardous waste during the winter months. It has to be uh, between, I think, April 1st to December or November 1st. So I might be a little bit off on those dates, um, but it's all on our website. Um, so if people are looking for um, to bring more household hazardous waste, that's where they can go. Um, who do I contact if uh, recycling or garbage is left behind? Um, uh, the first thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna have a, either a sticker on your bag uh, as to why it wasn't collected. Um, we have a report a problem feature on our website um, that is the, probably the quickest and most efficient way to get these um, reports to us. Um, and we also have E360's contact information um, on our website and uh, our automated um, phone system when you call in will um, have a prompt if your garbage and recycling was make, uh, missed and that will direct you right to E360. So um, that's how we're handling missed garbage, uh, missed. Uh, missed recycling um, with those stickers and report a problem and uh, we will handle it from there. Um, what do I do with my waste when there's a lot of snow? Uh, we ask you that you don't know, put it on a, a, a big tall snow bank. Uh, make sure it's accessible to our collectors. We kind of touch base on that. Um, but uh, yeah, if uh, residents just be conscious of, of where you're putting your waste and that it's accessible uh, to our contractors. 
Hey, Crystal, when it comes down to the winter seasons, we get the snow banks. We don't like to use that. So we will obviously reach out to you guys to get in touch with your plow to team, figure out their routes. Like we'll do a bunch of stuff like that too, to minimize all these issues. But we realize where we are and, and what the elements are going to mm -hmm. be. We'll do everything in our power to make sure we don't have that issue. That's great. Uh, where do you purchase a recycling bin? Uh, so you can purchase these bins at the township office uh, for $7. Sarah's uh, held up that bin uh, a number of times now. Um, and we have also, we have on order a medium sized bin, um, which there's a bit of a back order on supplies right now. So they haven't arrived, uh, but we'll be making an announcement when it does, if people want to upgrade their smaller containers to a bigger recycling container size. So, and I think it's going to be $10 for the larger ones. So, um, that's where you can get your recycling bins. Um, some people have asked where to buy bag tags. Again, we've touched on that online and at the township office. Um, some people have been asking about the holidays. Christmas holidays is coming up. Christmas lands on a Saturday, Boxing Day is on a Sunday. How does that affect our garbage pickup? It doesn't this year. Um, Christmas and Boxing Day um, and New Year's land on a, a weekend. So garbage will not be changed at all over the holidays. It's gonna be the same pickup. And I also just wanted to note that um, the Cornwall Recycling uh, Facility has reached out to us to tell us that they will accept recycled wrapping paper this year um, in a blue, you know, in a blue recycle bag, um, as long as there's no bows or ribbons um, or any of the uh, the things that you put on a present, I guess, or so just wrapping paper. So. Um, which is nice because uh, I won't count towards the bag limit, not that we'll have one by that time, but um, just so people are aware that they will be able to recycle their wrapping paper this year. Um, some people have asked where they can bring uh, their garbage and recycling if they miss a week or um, if their garbage wasn't picked up because of a you know, size or a weight restriction. And our landfills uh, do have operating hours um, so residents can use our, our landfill as long as they have a, a, a pass, a registered, they're registered for the landfill. Um, they can bring their waste to, um, to either site, be it Beaverbrook or North Lancaster, depending on, uh, their operating times. Did you want to jump in, Sarah? I wasn't sure if. Nope. No, you covered it. Okay, perfect. Um, and I guess just to, to, um, to make sure people know that our Beaverbrook landfill site is open from October to May. So it's open right now. That's a site that you would go to um, on Tuesdays and Saturdays from nine to five. So they're, it's only open to the public two days a week, um, but uh, all that information is on our website. Same with electronics. Um, people can take their electronics to our, our landfill site and uh, they get collected there. Um, Sarah, I'm hoping you can touch on this one, why we're implementing a bag tag program. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And, and that ties back into what I was speaking about earlier with we're really trying to encourage residents to divert as much as possible from our landfills, both in an effort to obviously extend the life cycle of our landfill, but also for and to be conscientious of the environment. So by reducing the number of bags that we're sending to the landfill, we're hoping that our recyclables can go into the recycling, our leaf and yard waste can be composted or submitted on our seasonal use day. leaf and yard waste day. Our, we're not sending our electronics directly to our landfill. We are recycling through the Ontario Electronic Stewardship Program. And then that hazardous waste is not going into our landfill, but being properly disposed of. So it's really diverting as much as we can in an effort to be responsible stewards of our, of our earth and our South Glengarry. Yeah. And I think it's important to note too, that we are, I, if not the last, we are the last uh, municipality to implement bag, uh, bag limits. So, um, and it's something that was recommended to us in, back in 2012 in a, in a recycling waste management study that was done. Um, so, you know, we're, we're a little late to, to get this done, um, but better late than never. And uh, this is another reason why we're, we're moving forward with um, bag limits. Okay, so uh, some people have asked when we're gonna introduce organic waste and the green bin collection. 
Um, I think it's safe to say that we're we're still exploring this. Um, we have the capability of doing it with uh, by procuring E360. Um, their submission um, was able to quote us for organic waste collection. Um, so it's something that we are investigating in detail, um, as well as some other um, diversion food organic waste, food waste diversion, such as the Food Cycler pilot project um, that we had this summer. Anything to add to that, Sarah? No, nope. I'm just going to give us a, a one minute time limit to get through the rest of these Perfect. so we can open up to residents. Okay, um, I'm just gonna, so uh, just to clarify, um, some people were asking about the contain, uh, the bag limit side. Um, one resident asked if they can put two 50 pound bags in a container. No, that container cannot be more than 50 pounds. So if you have two 50 pound bags, they have to either be in separate containers or, you know, in garbage bags at the curb. Um, I think the uh, residents with a business at their address is a good one. Yes. Um, so businesses who, uh, home-based businesses are still subject to that bag limit. So if you have a little salon working from home, um, and especially if your property is still uh, zoned residential, um, these bag limits do apply and bag tags are available for those small businesses as well. Um, we've had some questions about apartment buildings. Uh, not that there's many in South Glengarry, but there are some. Um, and the bag limit does apply to those uh, multi-residential units as well. So it, uh, an apartment complex of eight units will still be subject to the bag limit, um, whatever bag limit is in place in the next year. Um, a lot of large families, we do live in a, a farming agriculture community with uh, um, with fam large families and not just agricultural, I mean, that's uh, generalizing it, but um, a lot of people have reached out to us saying, you know, we can't reach that bag limit. We're a family of six, we're a family of 10. So uh, we're encouraging those residents to um, go through the authorized exemption process. Um, so they would fill the form, uh, well, they would go and fill the, um, the form out on our website. We would get that form we would supply you with a, an application, not a very long one or detailed, and we would review them at that time. So, um, you know, large families, families with medical needs, um, um, and any other situation that may come up, like a, you know, a one-off, uh, we will all, we'll look at them all individually. So um, if people are concerned about that, please reach out to us. And a lot of people are, are, are worried with these bag limits that there's gonna be some illegal dumping, um, garbage dumping. So we just ask that our residents be vigilant um, and to let us know if they witness anything um, because we'll be, we'll be monitoring that closely and seeing if there's a need for you know, extra garbage bins in certain places at certain parks. Um, we wanna be responsive to that. So uh, just please let us know um, if those things occur. Okay, I think we've addressed all of our FAQs. Um, I really want residents to have a chance now to, to uh, ask Sarah uh, or Mike or, or I some questions. Um, so like I said, I'd like for people to use the raise hand function if they do have uh, questions. Um, I'm looking in the attendees group. Um, I don't see anything up. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave, just wait a few minutes to see if, um, if any, I'm actually, I see, um, I'm gonna allow Angie to talk. Angie, do you have, can you tell me on behalf of the attendees if you have the raise hand function? I sure do, can you see okay, it? Perf yes, I do, okay, perfect. Okay. So sorry to pull you out, I just recognized that's your okay. name. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to make sure it's working, so that's great. Angie, if you have anything you wanna add, uh, I've called you out already, so. <laughs> Um, no, I've sent you my questions for just Perfect. my own, my yes. own place. Um, Actually, but the weekly recycling did not happen. So I'm not sure if it's okay. Let me, let me reach out to you. Okay. Cause, uh, yes. that, that should not have occurred and, and we'll address that. I'll reach out to you after this. Okay, Angie? That's fine. Okay. Thank you. So I don't see any hands up um from the attendees or uh the panelists 
So um, I'm just going to give it a few more minutes. Maybe people are, are thinking of their questions. Unfortunately, my chat um, my chat option is not working um, for some reason. So um, I don't know if I should. Uh, oh, I see Gary's hand. Okay, perfect. Okay, you know what, Gary? Um, I'm going to unmute you. And hi there. You can, can you hear me? Uh, okay. Speak up a little bit there, Gary. Sorry. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're a little faint, but I oh, can definitely make you out. That, is that better? That is better. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I really uh, like what you're doing in terms of setting up some sort of uh, structured approach to improving recycling and going to, to uh, weekly recycling is excellent, but I'm still having a hard time wrapping my head around what, why is the size of the containers, large containers unacceptable. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't see any change in the size of the bags. Is that correct? The bag size remains the same. Correct. So how does the difference other than the weight factor come into play? If I have a large container and I'm putting four bags that have 12 pounds in each, but they're just voluminous, uh, what difference does that make on the size of the bag, uh, size of the container? And more importantly, for recycling, the, the, the tiny bins and even the ones you're going to sell when you get them back from uh, back order are too small for people like me who really recycle. I was filling one of those 92 uh, gallon blue bins to the top and I'm putting in all my boxes and I recycle. I have been for the last 10 years and never had an issue with a driver or a truck that, or a driver that didn't have the robotic arm. Uh, reaching in and pulling my recycling out of this bin. And to me, it's, it's just, I, I just I can't wrap my head around why that's an issue for the township. I'm wondering if I might be able to ask Mike to weigh in. Sure, absolutely. We'll, we'll address the garbage first. So the issue with the large garbage containers is you cannot see what's in the bottom half of those containers. So be, that being said, you guys are a four bag limit. Yeah, the one that right on top, no problem. He could grab that. The second one, he could probably grab it as well. As soon as you get to that third and fifth bag, third and fourth bag, the driver cannot see what he's actually grabbing onto. And I'm not saying it's you, Gary, or anyone else in, in your township, but there's been needles, there's been broken glass, there's been stuff protruding from bags that our guys have gone to grab and they've ended up slicing their hands right open. So we as a company looked at what um, WSIB says, what Joint Health and Safety say, and we came up with our own policy. We are not going to stick our hands into oversized containers where we actually have to bend, physically bend at the waist to get into or, or can't see. So that's why with the smaller ones, yes. And you're right, with the smaller bins, when it gets those four bag limits, if they're only 12, 12 pounds per bag, you're probably going to see the driver just lift that small can and dump the whole small can. But he can't do that with the big one, and he's not going to be reaching in, bending over to that bottom half of that larger container. That's why, sir. And with regard to recycling? With regards to recycling, I'm surprised more people aren't utilizing clear blue plastic bags. I get you've got the, the cards put out there, but it's cleaner on windy days. Um, recycling is unlimited and it's very, very lightweight. So I'm, I'm surprised we don't see more of those clear blue plastic bags rather than just people utilizing those small little containers. Remember, your recycling is unlimited. You put out 30 of those blue bags, we'll take them. And they're not going to be heavy. We will grab those 30 bags right off the ground. Right. So if I was able to get five or six of those blue bags in a, a tall uh, recycling container, then there should be no issue. Uh, no, we're still asking. I, ju I just said, sir, that we prefer them on the ground still, right? We put out as many as you want, but we prefer them to be on the ground. So we don't have this issue reaching into these containers. And do you know if this is similar policy in other townships around here, or are we unique again? No, we're, we're mimicking Cornwall. We are mimicking what we're doing in Cornwall. Okay. And we do this across the board, but Cornwall is the closest city. We also do it... Um, 
in Belleville, Quinty West, and Prince Edward County. And Kingston is more just the bins, so that's the issue. They don't do bags. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for your question, Gary. Appreciate it. Is there anyone else? Uh, okay, I do see Angie's hands back up, so I'm gonna un. Oh, I might have just muted you. Sorry. Oh. Sorry, I was like hitting the mute and unmute while you Me were too. Doing. I was doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, just curious, um, can we use um, paper bags as our garbage bags instead of plastic? So um, this is one that I sent off to E360 Angie to let them know um, you're a resident who uses paper bags for their garbage uh, and recycling and are sorry for your waste, your garbage. Um, and I don't see any issues with that. Um, you're the first, surprisingly, the first person who's brought that to my, to my attention. Um, typically, those bags are used for leaf and yard waste. Um, but in that instance, I mean, it's garbage. It's in a, um, a paper bag. Um, it's not one of our um, acceptable uh, bags, but there's always exceptions. I think that can, or not exceptions, but we look at things on an individual basis and um, Melissa, our contact at E360, our customer service uh, contact um, has agreed, to, told her collector guys, yep, no problem. We'll pick up that paper bag at that address. So, um, you know, if other people want to do that and it's not getting picked up, we ask again, let us know uh, what you're doing. And uh, the reason uh, that kind of snowballs into another reason why we don't we don't accept leaf and yard waste with our regular collection is because it goes right to the landfill. So we want to avoid filling up our landfill with leaf and yard waste because we do have a section of the landfill uh, dedicated to that. Um, and it's just, it takes up capacity. So um, if you are using paper bags for your garbage um, and it's not getting picked up, let us know and we'll advise or let E360 know and we'll make that, uh, we'll make that happen. We don't want to discourage people from not sending plastic to our landfills either. Mike, I see you're Mike going to chime in on that. Yeah, um, it, it's great. This, the, this site has been addressed. I mean, I, this is different even for me. Um, it, I worry about it at yard waste time. If we are mm -hmm. collecting yard waste, we'd have to find a way to distinguish between the garbage and the, the actual yard waste that we were not mixing it. But I'm surprised these bags aren't breaking and making more of a mess or leaving i mean with the juice mm -hmm. residues and stuff because there are no organics right now i'm surprised they're not they're not ripping more or stuff like that but if if it's working and melissa knows about it we'll, we'll keep doing it mm -hmm. yeah there's no organics or anything in mine you have compost and okay. yeah, nothing. it's minimal <laughs> but thank you for discussing that i thought other residents might want to um yeah. aware as well it's a great point thanks angie Okay, I see a question hand up from uh, Diane. So I'm gonna allow you to talk, Diane. Laparel. Can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you. Okay, just a moment, I've got two calls coming in here. <laughs> uh, I, again, my issue, I can dismiss this. My issue is, again, is with the big recycling bins. I, I just don't, like the other guy, I just don't get not being able to grab a bag out of those bins. I mean, a, we've had pretty big high winds lately and those bags are not that heavy. So they're all over the place. And I don't get, I'm not that tall. And I can, I don't need to reach in to grab that bag because once you fill it up, it's pretty tall once you fill up. So the first bag in the bottom is not that far down. And I can't see what, I mean, unless his workers are really short, I'm not a tall person and I have no problem just grabbing that last bag without reaching from the waist down over the, the container. I'm, I'm still not getting the issue with that. I just, I can't believe that it's that difficult. And even if they just grab the ones they can, if they can't grab, 
you know, if it's too far, if it, there's, the bag's too small and they can't reach it, then leave it. But I, I just don't get it. And what do you do with those big containers now that you're bought? Like, right. what do we do with it? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, uh, I, I think that, you know, Mike has done a good job explaining uh, the why, uh, why they have implemented the, well, I, I get it if you can't reach it. I get that. Yeah. And, and we don't want uh, recycling not to be picked up either. And that's why we're encouraging and we're really trying to work with our residents to encourage them to, to take those uh, bags out of the containers. And I understand there's there, weather is a factor um, and, you know, maybe it's putting it out uh, for 7 a.m. in the morning instead of the night before. Um, we're, I know we're asking, you know, what may seem like a lot to our residents, but um, I think Mike has, you know, communicated very well on, on why they aren't reaching into those bins um, we don't have the arm to lift, uh, to lift those bins. We never have. So uh, the way our trucks, the trucks are built, uh, plus the health and safety of the, the collection workers. Um, you know, I think we've, we've explained, I guess, our why as much as we can. But you um, did have sorry, the, Crystal, I'll you did jump have in. Before. Here, Mike. Sorry, I'll jump in here and I'm going to tell you guys something I don't typically tell people. I mean, it's not the glam side. Unfortunately, in 15 years, I've had seven drivers pierced by used needles for reaching into garbage bales that they cannot see. Guys, I'm not saying you're doing it. I'm not mm -hmm. saying I'm not that. Talking and I garbage. I'm not talking garbage at all. I get the garbage. I, okay. I'm just going, to, I'm just going to jump in if I could. Um, so we don't know what is under that top recycling bag. I, I know most people put recycling in the recycling bin, but it could be whatever under, under bag one. And again, as Eklund kind of what Mike said, it's not something that anyone here is is doing, but it's just you you don't know what you don't know. And if you can't see it, you you don't know. So blindly going in because bag A was recycling doesn't mean bag B is recycling and doesn't contain a dangerous object. So it's just you we want to trust that everyone is putting recycling in that recycling bin. But but you don't know. We don't know. Well, yeah. I guess we don't have any choice. Just do what we have to do. I just, you know, after a few years of doing it one way and the other mm -hmm. company having the arm, it's almost like we're going backwards here. Things should be getting better, not worse with time. You know what I mean? Like technology should be better. Mm -hmm. No, if you never had it, I would get it because we wouldn't have those big bins, right? But so I get that you had it and now you don't is what's frustrating everybody. I, I understand. And, and this, I, this is not going to be a satisfying answer to anyone. However, our contractual, contractual requirements have not changed. So what we've contracted out re remains the same. And then that a previous provider had something outside of that contract. Is, well, help me understand yeah. this. What did what was the current con or the old contractor doing differently? I, you're saying they're reaching into these bins or dumping these no, bins. No, they How? had an arm. They their machine, their trucks had an arm, and we inquired before buying these big. We called a township. The township gave us the number for these contractors. We called them and got permission to use these big containers and went out and put the expense into a bigger container. So it's not like we made this up ourselves. It, it's, it's what no. we were told we could do and we did. Right. Now, so I don't know why they told us that if it wasn't allowed. No, it, and then this and, No, my God, I, I, so it's not that it wasn't allowed. It's, it's that whenever we went out to contract again, we contracted for this, the same service that was previously contracted. So it was available, but our contractual, and again, I know this is not a satisfactory answer. It, it's not, it doesn't feel good when you hear it, but it, it, it is the answer. The contract is the same. Um, with that note, we have about a minute left. So I'm wondering, Crystal, if there are any other hands up? Thank you. Thank you, Daya. Uh, no, I see no other hands up at this time. Um, and we're almost one o'clock on the nose. Um, 
did you want to wrap it up, uh, Sarah? Sure. I'd just like to thank everyone again for coming out and, and for your comments and, and your feedback. We appreciate it and we understand, as Crystal said, um, the growing pains and when we, we change providers and, and the way that we are doing things that it can be a bit challenging. And, and we really want to work with everyone to make this work. And we're excited about offering weekly recycling. And we are very passionate and dedicated to trying to really divert things from our landfills. And, and we'd love to hear from you. So please don't, don't be shy. Um, like th this, this is what we do. So don't, don't feel bad for expressing your concerns. I'm, I'm happy to hear them. And we are planning on doing a, a second virtual open house in early January once the bag tag limits come to, a, to effect, excuse me, uh, to kind of gather feedback about that. So I uh, look forward to that. And, and Crystal, if you have any party notes before you take us off of YouTube Live, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. I, I just want to thank everyone too for spending this last hour with us. Mike, thanks for, for making time in your busy schedule. Um, and Diane, Angie, and Gary for your questions. And uh, to everyone who submitted questions in advance, we, we also want to thank you too. So uh, continue to reach out to us. Uh, the good, bad, and ugly, we're ready for it all. Um, and hopefully we can continue to improve um, our service delivery and, uh, and work with our residents to, to improve our waste and, and recycling collection services. And that's it from me. Excellent. Okay. Have a wonderful afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.